Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Aaron from Black Swamp Outdoors, and I'm going to go over today my part two of my review on the Walther P22Q. So hang around and check it out. All right, guys, well, thanks for tuning in again to another Black Swamp Outdoors video. This time, like I say, the part two of the Walther P22 review. This is a sample size of one, uh, one, one handgun, one firearm. They make millions of these. Uh, if I really wanted to do this, you know, well, we would get more than one or find other people that have uh, multiples and, and compare data. I don't have those resources. Uh, all I have is this firearm right here. Uh, so this is going to be a down-to-earth, truthful uh, review and um, some of my findings on, on this handgun. So for all the keyboard warriors and uh, YouTube, we do have a clear firearm. Okay, so now we are approaching the 700 round mark on the Walther P22Q. That is not with any one particular ammo. I have purposefully mixed up ammos uh, to really try to see what this gun will eat. And um, the answer to that is uh, uh, kind of just like the ammo, it's, it's mixed results. Hands down the least reliable ammunition in my particular Walther B-22 is Winchester Silvertip Self-Defense 22 Long Rifle. You might as well uh, have a, a rock in your pocket and hope that, you know, this gun fires and then maybe when the gun fires once and then jams, you can, um, you know, distract him with the rock and throw the gun at him. It's just, it, it's abysmal, um, the, the silver tip in this particular firearm. I have shot a lot of CCI standard 40 grain, standard velocity 40 grain, um, and it does fairly well, probably 95% uh, fire, and, you know, if, and there's a 5% uh, malfunction rate. Um, I really wish that I wouldn't have lost, I've been, it's taken me a while to do this video, so I've been keeping, I've been keeping sheets of, of uh, malfunctions with different ammos, and I really am ashamed to say that I've lost that that content and I, I can't duplicate it. Um, you know, I can't just guess and go back. Um, that wouldn't be a true result. I have that somewhere and hopefully one day I'll find it and I'll post a video of that or a picture of it to our YouTube channel when I do, hopefully I do. Um, but for as of right now, I don't have that hard data. And for the next long-term review, we're going to be much more diligent about keeping and uh, noting, dictating that long-term data for, uh, for you guys. So one thing I have to uh, disclaim about my latter part of the rounds that I've put on the P22 is that probably 75% of them have been suppressed. Um, I would love to report and say that while wow, the extra back pressure of the can um, has really, uh, you know, increased the effectiveness of the pistol, you know, and the, re the reliability of it. Um, but, uh, but it just hasn't, um, I've had multiple failures with the suppressor on the pistol. Uh, does it run better suppressed? Absolutely. It does. Uh, but it it's not foolproof. Touching back real quick on the Winchester silver tip. I am starting to begin uh, to wonder if I've got a couple bad batches of ammunition. Um, you can hear my dad point out in the first video, which by the way, if you haven't watched the first video on this, check that out before you watch this one, because it's going to give you a little more, uh, a little more intel on kind of my situation with the pistol and what I've put it through and where we're at right now in the testing standpoint. So check that out. Um, try to put a link below or just check out our channel and uh, it'll be right on there. So like I said about the Winchester silver tip, I don't know that it's entirely the handgun's fault. I do think that it had some to do with um, the ammo itself. You can see that it's roughly cast. It's, it just appears to be poor quality ammo, even for a 22 long rifle. As far as self-defense 22 long rifle ammo goes with testing with this, like I said in the first video, I really think that that's where this could shine because of its size and its weight um, in a self-defense backpacking camping situation, but um, the reliability just isn't there to back up the 
size and weight, you know, the gain of that. I have been testing the brand new CCI Uppercut, which um, is pretty much a CCI Stinger case with a newly developed actual copper jacketed uh, projectile. It is not a copper plated projectile like most 22 long rifle uh, hollow points are. Um, I was really hoping that this was going to be the bee's knees for the Walther P22. However, on the second round that I ever fired with it, it jammed. Consequently, you can pick up how the trend went. It was pro it was intermittent. Um, it had multiple issues with the P22 and the, and the CCI uppercut, both unsuppressed and suppressed. It didn't seem to really matter. One ammo that I have tried um, in this, but I, I tested it again, I think I had skewed results because of bad ammo, is uh, Norma AC-22. Uh, you might as well, like I say, you might as well have a pocket full of rocks if you're going to try to shoot Norma TAC-22 out of this, because it will not, it, it just won't eat it, it just won't digest it. I mean, it's a, it's a stoppage every every two to three rounds. If you can get two consecutive rounds off, you're doing well with Norma out of this. But again, I did test that ammo in a 1022 that I had at the range at the same time, and I had similar results. So again, I'm just sharing all the information that I have up in my head on what I've done, what I've tested, what I've shot. Um, this is, again, a sample size of one this does not mean that all these pistols are bad. This doesn't mean that this pistol is bad. This is just my results. One thing I did do that extremely uh, helped the reliability of the P22, I'll go ahead and show you here, is uh, I polished some internal components. Grab my trusty Glock tool here, and you can kind of take a look, which it's pretty dirty right now because I have been testing it and shooting it. But right here, the feed ramp right here, I actually disassembled uh, the firearm and polished this feed ramp, and I also polished the uh, guide rails on the inside of the slide, uh, the ones that are attached to the frame that the slide rides on uh, would actually be in these grooves right here. Uh, those are polished on both sides of the frame, and like I said, that feed ramp, and that did seem to help the reliability. I will see if I've got some pictures or videos of me doing that and kind of where and uh, I will, I'll put them in this video. And if that's something you guys are interested in and you want me to make a video on how to do that, I can take it back apart and show you guys. So I've took some miscellaneous shooting and uh, shooting footage and I'll go ahead and you know, I'll put that in here. So hopefully it'll be at random points throughout the video. You guys can kind of see that. Um, one thing I do have to say about the P22 is that still throughout its testing, it has remained very, very accurate. If you can hold this pistol and do your part, and you've got quality ammo and the gun does it part, its part and feeds the ammo and fires it, it is very accurate. This is probably, um, my Glock 44 is, is accurate, but this may be may be the most uh, accurate semi-auto uh, rimfire that I own. It's, it's very accurate. The sights are easy to use, however, they're not um, super great quality, I don't believe, but, you know, it is a, you know, it's a, it's a polymer sighted uh, rimfire handgun. They are fully adjustable, like I mentioned in the first video. Um, they do seem easy to use. They're easy for me to see and get on target. Um, so overall, it has remained very accurate. One thing for me, going back to the first video again, I'm going to reference that a lot, my hand size. Um, I mean, you can see just how big my hands are compared to this gun here. I mean, I can I can cover up the, the entirety of the firearm uh, with large XL hands. Uh, doing drills with this, 1R1s, 1R2s, um, concealed draws. Uh, it's, it's very difficult for me to get purchase on the gun like I want out of a draw or out of concealment. It's hard for me to get on the gun, get my pinky in my hand where I want to be, get it out, get it presented, get a sight picture. Uh, it's also hard for 1R1s, 1R2s, whatever I was doing. Those reloading drills, 
it's hard for me to get the magazine out of the gun uh, in, a, in a timely fashion. Usually I have this meat of my hand that, you know, that's, that's holding the magazine in, something like that. That's typically what I'd end up with under stress, on, under time. So then I either, I have to strip it uh, with my other hand, or sometimes I can uh, move my hand, I can give it a flick and try to move that magazine out that way. But again, none of that that I have just referenced here is the, uh, you know, is, is the fault of the gun. Those are just things that I'm, I'm referencing and that I'm learning the more that I shoot and the more that I train with the gun. Another thing to reference to tell you is the wetter you run the gun, the better. A that, that it's a lot of the ways with a lot of different firearms, especially rim fires, because of how dirty they are. But the wetter you run this, the more success you will have. It's just plain and simple. If you keep it lubed, you're gonna run better than you know if it's not. It's not like I said. It's not a. It's not a Glock 19. It's not a Glock 17 or a you know whatever where you can run it fairly dry, almost completely dry. Um, that's kind of how they were designed as a everyday carry or a duty or, you know, a, a go to war weapon. It doesn't require that much attention to detail. It, it just runs. It just works. This, you know, kind of being what it is, more of a range toy, more of a recreation training pistol to get new shooters or, you know, someone interested in shooting sports. Um, it does require a little more attention to detail, and I have found that if you take a little time, keep it clean, keep it well lubricated, you will have better results. So guys, I've got about 300 more rounds to go till I get up to 1,000 rounds out of this Walther P22. When I get there, I plan to probably do another video and um, kind of finish it out. Uh, this is my part two. I'm going to try to make it three part um, once I get to that 1,000 rounds. And I think I'm really going to, I'm really just going to put it to it now. Um, I'm going to kind of slow down on on some of that really nitpicky maintenance that I've tried to do that did help a little bit. I'm just going to run it. A lot of that's going to be suppressed and I'm going to see what I can get it to do, uh, you know, when basically I have it stop. But I'm going to try to get closer to that thousand round mark and then, uh, you know, I'll make another video, another update and uh, we'll kind of finish it out around that thousand round mark. I don't want to drag this video on too long. Uh, you already, if you guys have seen the first video and you're interested in the second, then I thank you and thank you for your time of watching the first one. Hopefully you're enjoying the second one. Uh, stay tuned, uh, probably toward the end of summer here, middle of summer. Hopefully I'll have that third video up and we will kind of round out my final thoughts on the Walther P22. So guys, again, thank you for watching. Comment down below any questions, anything that you have, you know, uh, pointers, tips, tricks, anything. If you've got one, how the success has been with your pistol. Before we go, I will say that by far uh, the most reliable ammunition that I fired out of this gun is a CCI Mini Mag 
36 grain hollow point or uh, target tips. Um, both suppressed or non-suppressed, I have had very little issues with uh, either one of those mini mag rounds. So again, like people have said in the comments on the other video, run mini mags and you'll never have a problem. I don't know that I believe that, but you will have less problems than what I've had testing all these different ammos. It is definitely picky on what it likes to eat. And uh, if you keep up with mini mags, uh, if you want to shoot mini mags, they're a little more expensive, but they are, you're getting what you're paid for. They're a higher quality, a little higher quality round. Um, they do do very well out of the uh, Walther P22. So uh, that's my final thoughts for now, guys. On part two of the uh, little overview on this guy here, uh, hang around. And like I said, we'll try to finish that out with a part three. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate all y'all and we'll talk to you soon.